<laughs> All right, it's going. <laughs> like I was doing all check, check. All right, um, hey everybody, Tim Nash with Scopeman Realty here. Welcome to Lunch with Friends. I am in Marengo today. Y'all know where Marengo is? I actually, sadly a lot of people don't, but Marengo is a super charming town. It's just uh, west of Cedar Rapids and um, maybe northwest of the Amana colonies. Mm -hmm. And it is the county seat of Iowa County. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm out here is I just had lunch with Jenny Olson. Mm -hmm. Jenny is the director of, um, the county director mm -hmm. of, uh, Veteran Affairs. Veteran Affairs. Mm -hmm. So, so if you are a veteran in Iowa County, Jenny's your gal. But what I have found with Jenny is she is very active in, um, in just uh, making sure that veterans are aware of the benefits, empowering veterans um, of the vet of the benefits that are available to them, and dealing a lot with a lot of the issues that veterans are facing right now, and trying to find ways to help them. Um, within the VA system and then also just being a good mm. friend and a good ally when it comes to veterans and the issues that they're facing. Yes, sir. So um, we had lunch, like I said, we're at Lizzie's Dining Car and Caboose mm -hmm. in Marengo and it is the coolest place. Um, it's this big long, it's this big long building and as you can see behind me here, behind us, each booth has these little uh, monitors and you can kind of see it's just like like you're sitting in a dining car, and um, see, I'm gonna mess up my, uh, my camera there. It's just like you're sitting in a in a in a railroad car, and um, and like you know you're watching the scenery go by. So, so how was the chili? Going. The chili was great. So everything that they do here is pretty much in-house made. Mm -hmm. I had chili and I had a salad, and the chili was not. It was homemade. It was homemade chili. It was very, very, very good. And you had the tenderloin. I did. I did. And the tenderloin. Uh, what did she top say? Top forty. Top out of forty. Nine thousand. Out of nine thousand in Iowa. Exactly. So yes. they're in the top forty of, out of nine thousand here in the state of Iowa for their pork tenderloin. Yep. Normally, I'm not a fan. This pork tenderloin, it's on point. Yeah. Chef guess. Yes, and so Lizzie, who is owns it, we actually had a chance to chat with Lizzie a little bit. Lizzie used to run uh, Fongs in Cedar Rapids. So if you miss Fongs in Cedar Rapids and you want a little bit of, not taste of Fongs, but if you want some of the care that they put into their food, come out to Marengo. It's a it's a really great little small town, very charming, and check out Lizzie's. It'd be a great little, and it, the afternoon, the drive out here is gorgeous. Oh yeah. Oh, the yeah. drive out here is Best really time gorgeous. of year to come yep. to Marengo, especially on the back roads. Get the interstate folks, take 151 all the way from Cedar Rapids down to Marengo through the Manicom. It's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. So, but, so we've got Veterans Day coming up, and that's why I wanted to chat with mm -hmm. Jenny today. So what I want to know from Jenny is kind of what are some of the major issues that veterans are facing right now, and how are they able to essentially help themselves? Right. Um, so yeah, right. uh, go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead. Right. I'll let you talk. Tim, mm -hmm. thank you so much for the, for the intro. I appreciate it. So again, my name is Jenny Olson. I am the Director of Veterans Affairs here for Iowa County. Now, what makes Iowa unique is that every county has one, at least one, VSO, which is Veteran Service Officer, for their county. So you don't have to drive to Marengo, Iowa, or to Johnson County, just to go ahead and see a local veteran service officer, there's one of me in every single county. So just go ahead and Google Veteran Service County, and then your county, and the information should pop up. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. So I've been doing this nearly a decade at this point in time. I'm a veteran. Yep. I started off in the Air Force, and then I went to the Army. Uh, long story, my twin sister was part of that. So I, my first deployment was with the Air Force in West Mississippi. My second deployment three months later was in Nawawa Beach over in Iraq in a tent with 26 other females. I would choose the Army over the Air Force at this point in time for the esprit de corps alone because everyone in the Army is suffering together. Yes, so, yes we are. Moving forward. <laughs> so a lot of people, when we got back from deployments, we had no idea what benefits were available for us. Mm -hmm. You know, when you returned from deployment, was there really any sit-down conversation in reference to... Yellow ribbon together? ceremonies. Yellow ribbon ceremonies. They, I don't think they had that when you guys came they back. Didn't, I'm not trying to age myself, but definitely... I was not. only about two years behind your deployment. They, they learned from us, then, yes. which is, you know, we, yep. we are Gen X and we are the Papa generation, so <laughs> that's okay. So when I got this job, I actually found out about what benefits were available. Now, a lot of people 
that are younger, that are still working, um, they don't know even about these benefits. So Tim, I was able to go down to Camp Dodge and kind of discuss with Tim and another group of the training, uh, what is it, the training command? Troop Command, oh, troop 67 command. Troop Command, yeah. Fantastic, so give them the idea of what kind of benefits we have available mm -hmm. for veterans, especially returning from deployments. Mm -hmm. So there's five ways yeah. of getting veteran service connected. Mm -hmm. You've got primary. Mm -hmm. Now say for example, if you received direct injury, um, we'll say if you got a, a, a shoulder injury when you're down range, right? Or when you were active duty, even playing football. So that would be a direct or primary mode of injury that you that you experienced while you're active duty. Now the secondary, say like six months later, you're experiencing numbness and tingling going down your extremity or burning sensation, right? Or if you had surgery and had that scar tissue and it limits the mobility that you can move. Those are secondary conditions that can be also provided for compensation in direct relation to that first primary condition. Then we have presumptives. Now, presumptives people hear a lot about, and we'll use the Vietnam era veterans right now for examples. Yeah. So say Vietnam veterans, they serve boots on ground, now within 12 nautical miles, mm -hmm. or in certain countries that now they understand did have Agent Orange there. So if they develop things like type diabetes, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if mom had it, dad had it, if the twin brothers, cousins, twice removed sister had it, it's presumed that if you develop type diabetes, if you serve boots on ground, or if you served in those designated location, that your service in that location caused that particular illness. Yep. Then we have aggravated. Mm -hmm. I use myself for example on this one. So I actually was diagnosed with a bad back. Back in my early 20s at Lackland Air Force Base, mm -hmm. I was just being, I complained, they went down the emergency room, they said my back hurts, and they said, wow, your back sucks, so you have this degenerative back disease. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, and they said, just keep in shape and, and, and keep the weight off, mm -hmm. see how well that worked out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so moving forward, my deployment with the Army, I ended up falling off a building over in Iraq and impaling my leg and really doing a number on my back and my neck. I know, I know, no guts or glory is complete stupidity on my part. <laughs> so with that, I am now service connected for my back due to the aggravation. It was a pre-existing condition mm -hmm. and my military service has happened to aggravate. There you go, makes sense. Then the last one is the 1151. Now that's the VA medical malpractice. It does not happen very often. Sometimes it does, oftentimes it does not, but that's something that also a service connected for. So, what is the best way? So I'm. I would. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I. Um, I was lucky. I came back. I didn't have any injuries mm -hmm. as a result of any, any of my deployments. Mm -hmm. um, I. I think I'm pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so, I and you know I keep getting years and years and years away from my from my deployment, and soon, soon I will retire from the Iowa Guard, and I will no longer be directly connected to the Iowa National Guard, and so. Um, just because of that, so I'm trying to finish. We got crowds coming by. Um, so since, but but I think the key is is that there may come a time when I am going to need that VA. Uh, those V. I need. I, I will need to access those benefits. So how does someone like me make sure that I can be service connected? And so if if in fact that time does come, I can't utilize it, and I'm not. To wanting fight. to strangle people out of frustration right. because the VA system's not working for them. Right, fighting the system. Right. Couple, couple key things I would say for a, a recipe for success, right? First and foremost, just because you can file online mm -hmm. doesn't mean you should file online. And the reason being is because if you file online, which you can, you won't be able to access and watch your file or watch your claim going through the process. So again, we've got these veteran service officers that are active throughout the state of Iowa. Um, other states also have veteran service officers. You just have to look them up. Uh, not every state is as cool as Iowa. Well, it, we are Iowa. We are pretty cool. <laughs> you know. So with that, go to someone that is trained, that knows what they're doing. This service, right? This service is absolutely no cost to you or your family. If you happen to come across someone that's willing to get you these same services, but they expect you to pay them, you've gone to the wrong door. That's not the place you want to go. You want to go ahead and go to someone that's highly trained. These benefits are there for you at no cost to you. 
um, which is why I say look up the veteran service officer in your county, or like I said, the American Major VFW. So there are what we call pension poachers that will charge you an astronomical fee for the same thing that we do, right. that we're highly trained for. Mm -hmm. If they make promises, they're lying, because they can't get through the system because they don't want to uh, So that would be the first thing for success. Yes. Second thing, so the amount of people I have coming in my office, mm -hmm. that, for example, when they were active duty, and they woke up and things started to hurt, right? The natural reaction would be what? Slam like 800 milligrams out of your body. Yeah, sure. And then fall out with a sugar free Red Bull or a monster. Yeah. You know, which is great. In your 20s. Yeah. We get old. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. Like that served you well in your early days of military service. Yeah. When you start getting close to the retirement phase, it doesn't serve you well anymore. Mm -hmm. So going into your annual appointments, folks, like if you have insurance, do it. Go talk about that different things you have going on. If you are having issues sleeping at night, if you do, like for example, the chronic sinus issues yeah. that are considered a presumptive now for those who have served in the Yeah. A lot of people when we get back are like, oh my God. My allergies are horrible. It's not your allergies. It's not your allergies. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people, it, it manifests like allergies. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. it feels like. But it's not allergies. Right. It's actually the chronic sinitis or chronic rhinitis. Oh, jeez. Caused yeah. by yeah. burning fecal matter, burning diesel fuel, mm -hmm. sandstorms, things along those mm -hmm. lines. Yeah. So being able to recognize, eh, I understand that people get old and that mm -hmm. things break down. But being able to recognize, okay, this has been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. That's going to check it out. Yep. Just make sure you're okay. Help set yourself up for success. When we're filing claims, we need a few components to be successful. One, in service event or injury. So, when you surgery or release, there's exposure there to chemicals and to white or things. Or if you're injured after duty. And then you fast forward, say, like 20 years. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying not to date myself, but this is the 20 years of me. For my I'm not far deployment. behind you. you just <laughs> missed me so, sad. so with that being said, we have people now, 20 years later, that are just like, I didn't realize this was going to be a thing. Right. I didn't realize yeah. that this was an issue. Mm -hmm. How do I be successful now? Yeah. You know, and again, it's it's getting into the doctor and discussing those concerns. Is that just any doctor, or does that need to be like going to the the VA? Like I know there was a right. VA clinic in Cedar Rapids. Like, do mm -hmm. I need to go to VA annual VA mm -hmm. checkups? No. Absolutely okay. not. It can be a regular general practitioner. So as long as you're going to your general practitioner right. like once a year and mm -hmm. doing your annual checkup, right. that counts. Yes, Cause, absolutely. Because the VA can access that yeah. paperwork. We would get copies of those medical records from the veteran when they come in. Okay. You know, we'd have them the little bit of homework that the right, veteran right. does. Applying for those records, it's mm -hmm. really as simple as making a phone call and saying, I'd like these copies of those records. Um, that helps us be successful. Yep. Because again, it shows us a current medical list of diagnoses medications you're taking mm -hmm. that we can connect to the end service of that. Yep. Okay. So I think just kind of, unless there's anything major you want to touch on, I just kind of want to, in summary, mm -hmm. um, and the one, the one thing that I think that um, and some of you out there might not be veterans, but maybe you have loved ones that are veterans or something like that. As a veteran, I know that something that we all really rely on is that we all um, take pride in is self-reliance. Mm -hmm. We don't need any help from anybody. We can take care of ourselves. Doing this is being self-reliant. Right. Doing this is doing the right thing and taking care of yourself. Right. Okay. So that's the first thing that I would say. The second thing is go find your 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 local um, your local service veteran also. service uh, yeah. mm -hmm. director. Go find that individual. Go find that individual okay. whose job it is is literally. And if you are plugged in with someone like Jenny, then you're in good shape. And you just keep, you know, go to, go to your doctor, do what you got to do. And if that time comes, you know how to utilize those benefits. You know who is going to be able to help you. So, right. There's right? way more benefits besides compensation, folks. So, I mean, I know that's kind of what we discussed today. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to go in because those benefits are changing all the time. Yep. Even with the state benefits that are available, yes. the federal benefits that are available. It's worth taking the moment just to check in with folks. Yep. So that's what I recommend. So check in with your local mm -hmm. VA rep. And um, aside from that, Jenny, thank you so much for your time. Tim, it has been a pleasure. And the information, valuable information that you're putting out there. And also the discovery of Lizzie's Dining Car and Caboose in Marengo, Iowa. Come down, check it out. Take an afternoon, grab the kids. This place is 
really adorable it's and the amazing. food is awesome, okay? All right, it's been lunch with friends, Tim Nash of Scoban Realty, with Jenny Olson with the vet VA, and uh, y'all have a great uh, have a great Veterans Day. Take care of each other, and um, yeah, thank you for your service. See you, be, be seeing you guys soon. Yeah.